And Father, we lift our hands with praise. And Father, we thank you right now that wisdom and revelation, it will flow freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, God. For I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. And Father, I pray over every ear right now, I declare it's anointed to hear the word of God. And every heart is good ground to receive the word of God. Father, I just thank you that you are perfecting everything that concerns us on this day. And Father, I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit has a liberty to move in every household, to move on every computer screen, to move in every car. Move with liberty. Touch your people. Give them one word from this sermon, from this message that can change a thousand generations. Now, Father, we declare that your word will not return to you null nor void. It will do what it sets out to do. So we thank you in advance for deliverance. We thank you in advance for enlightenment from the word. We thank you for manifested promises, breakthroughs that's going to come from the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. And Father, we give you all the honor and we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. It is Easter Sunday, and our Savior is risen, amen. And we're going to talk about it today, and we're going to hop right into the Word of God. I've uh, been meditating on this, uh, I want to say, <laughs> I want to say all year. Uh, uh, since the beginning of the year, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, my faith, and I, I gave a word uh, during, during the, uh, the first words for the year, was, 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 I told XL Church, I told our church, we're going to need divine assistance this year. We're going to need divine assistance this year. And lo and behold, what's going on with the world right now with the COVID-19 and the virus and the stay at home and people can't work and people out of work. Listen, I want you to be encouraged that you have divine assistance. God is going to take care of you. The angels are going forth on your behalf, going before you, making favor, making a way out of no way. God is going to take care of you. And as, as I began to think about divine assistance, I thought about how God took us over into John 15 and, 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 and he prepared us. He talked about, he, he, said, he, he said, listen, I am the true vine. You guys are the branches. And every branch that's in me, it bears fruit. And God has been holding our hands, walking before us, all year long, and he's been faithful to his word, and it's evident to us today. So we don't lean to the world system. We, we lean to God's reality, which brings me to this third point. The third point is the resurrection. What I'm going to talk about today is, 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 is it's going to be a lot of whys. Why is the resurrection so important for us? Why is this day so important? For the believer in Christ. You know, if you don't understand the why of something, you won't execute it. If you don't understand the why of something, you won't commit to it. You know, I was thinking about this thing, how committed, you know, gangsters are to their code and, 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 and don't touch the wife, don't touch the families. And I was thinking about how the devil has twisted things in the streets of, of, of this world. You know, if, if, if you see something, you snitch, you, you, you snitch if you tell so on and so forth. That's the code of the streets. And I thought about it. It's a twisted way to think. But I looked at their commitment to it. I looked at their commitment to that code. And some of those people are willing to die for it. Some of those people are willing to go, go to prison for life under that code. Why? Because somewhere deep down inside of them, they feel like they know the why to why they're doing it so they can commit to it. So today we're going to talk about the resurrection and the whys and what does it mean to us as believers. Amen? Glory to God. So just write down your notes right there at the top of your notes, the resurrection and why? Question mark. Let's go over to Luke 24. Luke 24. Woo, he's alive. Glory to God. <laughs> you ought to just say that right there in your living room. He's alive. You got to hear yourself say it, man. He is risen. Whew, thank God for Minister CC and that team that's, that's, that was worshiping this morning. Glory to God. We thank God for them. Hallelujah. Luke 24. We're going to read this uh, starting at verse 1 in the King James Version. And I want you to really 
just, just, just read along with me. Now upon the first day of, of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher bringing the spices which they had prepared. Now these are women, so I imagine it may be the Spice Girls. Uh, next verse. Uh, and certain others with them, uh, verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from the, from, from the tomb. Next verse. And they entered in and found not the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Next verse. And it came to pass as they were perplexed. You got to think about it. My God, they crucified him. We put him in the tomb and he's gone. They were perplexed. They're about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Angels. As they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, and they said unto them, Why do you seek ye the living among the dead? Think about that line. Why do you seek, seek what's alive now among the dead? Next verse. He is alive. He is not here. Repeat that after me. He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in yet Galilee. So Jesus was a prophet of what's happening right here. He was telling the disciples what was going to happen. He was prophesying over his own life, and the angels are reminding the ladies of this. Next verse. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Watch this. And be crucified. And the third day, somebody say the third day. Today, the third day, rise again. Next verse. And they remembered his words. And I want you to hold that, hold that right there in, in, in verse 8. They remembered his words. They remembered his words. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven, to all the rest. And it was Mary. Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told unto the apostle these things. What is so important about this? Number one, it tells us about the resurrection. It tells us he was in a tomb. It tells us he rose out of that tomb. It tells us two angels instructed those ladies and said, hey, why do you seek the living among the dead? Listen, Christ is alive he is risen. He is alive. And, and, and we're going to see later on where Paul talked about if this thing would not have happened, our religion would be in vain. Glory to God. Let's go to uh, Matthew 27. Matthew 27. So they come up on the tomb and Jesus is risen. And I was thinking about this. If a believer does not understand thoroughly the death, the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection, everything after that, if they don't understand that, there's a high probability that they will be in religion. Why? Because religion causes us to carry out acts. But understanding the death, the burial, and the resurrection, it gives you the why to your religion. It gives you to what, the why to what happened on the Good Friday. It gives you the why to what's happened today. And when you know the why, you can easily commit. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 27, uh, let's, let's go to verse 32. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I'm not going to take my time today because I know you got some collard greens and some neck bones, some cornbread and some Good old fried chicken and, and, and for us vegans, I know we got some, some rice and some greens and, and some stuff like that set aside. So I'm not going to take my time. I'm going to go ahead and get through this word, bless you, acknowledge our Savior, and magnify our Savior so you can get to your Easter dinner. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 27, verse 32. And as they came out, they found a man, Serene Simon by the name, compelled to bear his cross. And they were coming to a place called Gal. Galgada, that is to say, the place of skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingle with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Now, right now, I'm talking about the crucifixion. We've seen the tomb, but let's see how he got there. I'm talking about the crucifixion, and I want you to think about this. He is, he is literally being mocked. 
He's been whipped. He's been spat on. He's been mocked, a crown of thorns on his head. He, and, 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 and Jesus, Jesus understood God's plan. He knew I have to die. And we're going to see why he had to die. And they gave him vinegar, verse 34, and drink and mingle it with gall. And when they had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him. I want you to think about this. Crucifixion is one of the most painful deaths that any human being can experience. It is painful. It, is, it, is, it takes everything in a man because Jesus was not the first one crucified. This was a practice back in those days. It takes everything in a man to get a hint of breath while he's dying. It's very painful. So they crucify him, parted his garments, garments, cast it lots, that it might not be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted his garments among them, and upon my, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. Now, I'm going to keep going, but I want to pull something out of this for you. The Roman soldiers were favoring the value of his robe over the value of the Son of God on the cross. They were favoring the benefits of casting lots and getting this expensive robe over the Son of God on the cross which tells me, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on what he did for you. Keep your eyes focused on why why was he raised from the dead for you. Why? We don't want to be like the Roman soldiers putting value on what we can get out of Jesus. He's already done all he's going to do, and what he did, he paid one heck of a price for us to be free from sin and death. But those Roman soldiers didn't even have enough wherewithal to realize the Son of God is right here with you and you're putting more emphasis on the value of his robe than Jesus Christ of Nazareth on this cross. We don't want to live our lives like that as believers. We want to know why the death, the burial, and the resurrection had to happen. And sitting down, they watched him there. Think about that. They're watching him die. And he's dying for you, he's dying for me, he's dying for grandma, he's dying for grandpa, he's dying for the sinner, he's dying for people he doesn't even know. And while he's going through this agony, they're mocking him and they're watching him as he slowly dies. And they set up over his head his accusation written, this is the king of the Jews. Then then there were two thieves crucified with him. One on the right hand, one on the left hand, and they that passed by reviled and wagged their heads, mocking and picking. And they said, you destroyed the temple. That's what you say. And you say you're going to build it back up in three days. Hey, Jesus, why don't you go ahead and save yourself? Now, how many people know Jesus could have came right off that cross? He could have came right down and dealt with everybody and went on about his business. But but he wasn't dealing with people. He was dealing with sin. Sin for who? He was dealing with sin. He was dealing with death. He was, he, was, he, was, he was gaining momentum to have victory over sin and death. They said, they said, they said come down. I mean, come on. Can you save yourself? Think about that. I mean, think about that. Think about the, 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 the arrogance of people who are mocking your Lord and Savior at the time when he can barely breathe and he's doing it all for us. <clears throat> you say, save others, save himself. Can, can, can I just save himself? Verse 42. And he be the king of Israel. Let him now once come down off that cross and we will believe him. And he trusts, verse 43, he trusted in God. Let him deliver himself now. And he will have him for he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast same in his teeth. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried aloud, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabah, that it is to say, my God, my God, why have 
you forsaken me. So right here, what Jesus is, 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 is experiencing right now, he's experiencing and he knows for the first time I'm about to be separated from my father. Because I got to go to hell and deal with something. I got to go down there and deal with sin. I got to go down there and win over death. I got to go down there and win over and get a victory over the grave. And some of them stood there. And when they heard that, they said, this man calls for Elijah. <laughs> Think of the mocking. And straight away, one of the men ran, took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it in a reed and gave, him, gave unto him drink. Uh, the rest said, let, let, be, let us see whether Elijah uh, will, will, will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, or the earth responded to the Son of God, to the Son of God's death. And the rocks rent, verse 52, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints, which includes my mama, glory to God, many bodies of the saints, they arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion or the Roman soldier and they that were with him, these guys who were casting lots, this moment was so profound in the spirit. Those same guys that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things were done. They feared greatly. Truly, this was the son of God. Jesus did not have to tell them that. The events of his death in the spirit realm spoke it directly to him, and they were overwhelmed, knowing this is the Son of God. Now, in your notes, I want you to write this down. The resurrection gives us hope. The resurrection gives us hope. Hope in what? Hope that we will have eternal life as born-again believers. Hope that death has lost. Death is still not fighting. Death has lost, past tense. And when Jesus rose from the dead, it was a monumental moment for the believer to know, listen, the Bible says that he is the first fruits of resurrection. First fruits of what? Those who come after him can look at that and they can say, you know what? My time on this earth is just a long holiday, baby. I don't care. I don't care uh, uh, when I pass away. When I do pass away, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But what I do know and what I do understand, I know why and what happened from Friday to Sunday. I understand that. And I look at my Savior, my first fruits. If he rose from the dead, the Bible says, so will I. You want eternal life. Don't let this virus thing distract you. Don't let your, don't let your finances distract you. God is going to take care of you through this. The greatest gift we have is eternal life that was given to us through our Savior who was killed, crucified, buried, and he rose from the dead. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Woo! 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The reason this is so important to me is you've always heard me say this. I can't commit to nothing if I don't understand it. <laughs> I got to know why I say I'm a believer. I got to know why. You know, I, I got to understand the whys of what I'm doing, and I thoroughly understand. That's why when you thoroughly understand the death, the burial, and the resurrection, you don't play pity patty with church. You're not easily offended. You're not in your feelings about what's going on at the church. You're not in your feelings about people. You're not in your feelings about what a family member did to you. Why? Because the, your understanding of the death, the burial, and the resurrection should supersede all spiritual pettiness. Why? Because it's a great thing for the believer to understand that he, our Savior, is risen. Hallelujah. Well, uh, let's see, First, uh, First Corinthians 15, verse 21. Hallelujah. For since man came death, for since by man came death, what man? Adam. What Adam did in the garden. 
the death, by man, by man came also the resurrection of dead. Now, go to Genesis uh, chapter 2 real quick. Genesis 2. So by man, so what Adam did, came death and sin entered into the world. And I want you to see this. And I'm just building a case here so you can really just grasp what's going on, what's, what's going on today uh, on this beautiful, happy Easter. Genesis 2. And just hold your place right there in Corinthians. So I said, hold my place, find yours. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. My, my, my hands are kind of dry here. I forgot my lotion. You know, if you get your lotion, you got the little white in between your, your, your thumb and, and, and your finger there. It's like, man, you got to. Back in the day, uh, my mama used to say, just go ahead and lick it you know, and get it together. But I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that in public right now. Um, I, I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that to you. I'll do it once you turn your head and get your sausage. Genesis 2. Now, what I'm about to show you, you, you this, this is going to, you may just run around and shout once you understand what's happening here. Genesis 2, uh, verse 7. This is God creating man. Now, Genesis 2, verse 7. I want you to write down in your notes, God created life. Write it, out, write it down right now. God created life. God created life. And the Lord God, and, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed life into his nostrils. Not just life, the breath of God. The breath of life. And man at that point became a living soul. So God creates life and man did not. See, we think life is this body. <laughs> we think life is this shell right here. No, you are a living soul and this body is just the house that we live in. But, 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 but God didn't create the body. He created the soul, and the body just houses the soul because man is spirit. Genesis 2, verse 7. You got that now? God created life. Now let's go over here to Genesis 2, uh, verse 17. I want you to write this down in your notes. <clears throat> God was the first introducer of death. God introduced the idea of death, and God introduced the idea of life in Genesis 7. It's going to be very important later on. Verse 17, he's talking to, he's talking to Adam and Eve. He's, he's giving them instructions on, listen, all of these trees in the garden you can touch, but this one right here, don't do it. Verse 17, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of this one tree. For in the day that you eat thereof, now watch God's introduction, you shall surely die. We're in the book of Genesis now, chapter 2, and this is the first introduction of death. So I have to, have to look at the first Adam that 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 15 is talking about by death. Death came through this man, through this sin of this man and his woman. Death, it, 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 so, so something had to be corrected, and God is telling them, and Adam has to go, what, what do you mean, uh, death, die? What, what does that even mean? They had to be like, what is, we, we never heard that. Uh, death. What, what does that even mean? Well, you know the story. They bit it. They bit the apple and sin. They, they ate of the tree and boom, sin entered into the earth. And when that happened, it began to wreak havoc. One thing I want you to know about death and Satan Satan is not the author of death. The Bible says he has the power of it. Death, death has been, has been defeated by Jesus Christ. Death has been overcame by Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that in the word of God. But here's the first understanding we need to have. Glory to God. Death cannot kill you. Death is just a state that when he told Adam, you shall surely die, it didn't kill him. But he went into a state where he, he got shameful. He got, they got guilty. They, they, cover, they, they clothed themselves with leaves in the garden. They were in a state of shame, a state of guilt, and a state of sin. Death is not a killer. 
So Jesus didn't die to rescue us from killers. He died to get victory over death. Why? Because Satan is not the author of death. He did not introduce death. God just simply told Adam, look, man, everything's going to go good. But if you touch this one right here, you shall surely die. Death is a state. <laughs> Glory to God. Death is a state. And, 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 I, and I've had relatives that were, that, that were killed. But we didn't say, yes, yeah, somebody, somebody death them. What happened to your uncle there? Well, somebody death him. No, we say somebody killed him. An act of killing put my uncle in a state. And Jesus said, I'm going to deal with that state. Because your uncle was born again and, he, and, 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 and somebody, and, and, and the, somebody in sin of a sinful nature betrayed the laws of kindness and they took his life, they killed him, but they didn't death him. So although that might have happened to a relative or a friend or whatever, listen, we, we, I, when people say, what happened to your mom at the age 14? I don't say, uh, 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 she deathed. I said, she died. She passed away. And she entered into a state called death. And Jesus said, that state right there, when you live this world and you've chosen me as your Lord and Savior, I've dealt with death and grave has no victory. Death has no sting and the grave has no victory, period, point blank. End of he says, I have dealt with the state of death. Now, that began to give me encouragement. And we're going to see in the word of God why. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. In your notes, I want you to write this down. Ooh, give me a glory to God right there in your living room. Ooh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo. Let's see here. Shoot me on your screens there. I don't know if it's on there or not. Listen, I, I'm not going to try to be cute. I, I got to look to the side. It ain't on this one. I don't know. I'm going to look and see what it says. Uh, um, man alive. I'm just going to look. Esau says you can't Easter is telling us you can't attempt to put truth in the grave. You can try to put truth in the grave. You can attempt to put truth in the grave, but it won't stay there. They tried to put Jesus in the grave, but he says, listen, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the life, brother. It can't stay there. It also says you can try to bury power, but it won't stay there. So many people have tried to take you out. So many people have tried to make you out of nothing. So many people have put their mouths on you, tried to put you in the grave, put your name down, so and so forth. But let me, let me tell you what the resurrection means to you as a believer. They can't keep you down. You don't stay down for long. There's something about the resurrection power that tells the believer, if your Savior went through this, know this. Anything you see dead in your life, including your soul, including you as a man, you can get born again and you can be alive to Christ. But anything that's down in your life, know this about the power of the resurrection and the authority you have to speak to it to come up. Why? Because you can't keep power down. You can't keep truth down. You can't keep love down. They tried to do it with Jesus Christ in the grave and, and, and he is walking proof that you can't contain it. He has victory. He has victory. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> Glory to God. Next thought. Just right there, just right there in your living rooms. The natural result of the resurrected life, the natural result of the resurrected life, the natural result of the resurrected life is this. Death has no power. Death has no power. Why? Because Jesus took it all away. Jesus gained victory over it. Adam messed it up and the Bible says the second Adam came along which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior and he addressed it. He addressed it. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. 
Somebody said, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't really believe that. Well, uh, that's good, except for let's go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 2. Immediately, if you can, get this ready for me in the, uh, in the uh, Amplify, the Message, and the Passion Translation. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was, this, 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 this idea that, that, that Christ has risen, I, I am just, I'm, 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 I'm just beyond being defeated. It ain't going to happen. And I want you to be beyond being defeated. Amen? Hebrews. Thank you, Lord. I was going to say, man, it's cold in here, but you, you, you're in your own house. <laughs> Hebrews 2, verse 14. <clears throat> Somebody said, what's wrong with you? Man, this technology is, is something else, I'll just tell you. But we're going to preach this word today. Hebrews 2, 14. For as much then as the children are the partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took of the same, that through death he might destroy him. Watch this. What did I say earlier? That had the power of death. See, Satan, Satan is not the, he, 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 he only has the power we give him. He has the power of death through sin. He has the power of death through sin. And we're going to see later on that Jesus even dealt with that. He, the power of death through sin, that is the devil. So the devil, the devil only has the power of death we give into him. That's it. Because Jesus has dealt with it. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you live a, a guilt, a, 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 a guilt a, a infested life, a, a, a shame infested life, and a life not understanding that the sin has been dealt with. Well, man, I'm over here sinning, but the sin has been dealt with. If you don't understand that the sin has been dealt with and, 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 and Jesus had victory over that thing, over the grave, over the death, over the sin. Guess what? You will continue to give the, the Satan, the devil, the power of death over your life. Now, that's not to say you'll die of a physical death, but you can give him the power of death over your mind. And all of a sudden, you're just not even thinking straight. You don't have a sound mind like the Bible says. You can give it to him, but he just, he is not the owner of it. It's been taken away from him. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Verse 15. And delivered them through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took on him the nature of angels... He did not take on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. This is so important. And you'll see in the other translation. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Which brethren is he talking about? You. To be made like us. That he might be merciful and faithful high priest. Be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of people. Reconciliation is an accounting term to buy us back. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this, 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 this same thing in the Amplified. Hallelujah. Let's look at the same thing in the Amplified. Therefore, since these, these his children share in flesh and blood, somebody say, that's me. <laughs> the physical nature of mankind he himself, in a similar manner, also shared in the same physical nature. In other words, in order for him to deal with the sin, deal with death, he had to take on the form of a human being, but without sin. So that through experiencing death, it was just an experience, <laughs> he might make, watch this, powerless, ineffective, impotent, him who, him who, the devil. Satan himself, Jesus made him powerless, ineffective, and impotent, made him, him who had the power of death. That is the devil. 
And according to the word of God, Paul is saying, listen, when Jesus died, when he was when he was crucified and he died and he rose from the dead, listen to me. They buried him and he rose from the dead. He said, listen to me. What I've done, I made him powerless. This day he is risen, made the devil powerless and ineffective and impotent. He has no power over us because the resurrection gave us that. The re- this is telling us why the resurrection is so important. Next verse. And that he might free all those who through glory to God, through the haunting fear of death. See, if you don't understand death, death will haunt you. It haunted me for 20 years concerning my mom. It concerned me that she had passed away. Where is she? Why? What's going on? I didn't have any understanding of death, not knowing she was absent from her body and she was present with her Lord. And she had graduated, what we say in our homegoing services, she had graduated. She had actually went to where we are believing God to get to. So your loved ones who have passed away know God more than you will ever know him while you're on this earth. Why? Because that, the resurrection, the resurrection tells us that, listen, that you shouldn't be haunted by the dead. You shouldn't be haunted by the fear of death. Listen, were held in slavery throughout their lives. Think about that. When people don't understand the resurrection, they don't understand death, they don't understand eternal life, the power of the devil will hold them hostage. And death, the thought of death, will haunt them all of their lives. Next verse. Glory to God. Next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's see this in the uh, message translation. The message translation. Glory to God. Since the children are made of flesh and blood, that's us, it is logical that the Savior took on flesh. He came down. He became a human being. He had to do that in order to buy us back. And took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his... Glory to God. Next verse. By his death. He rescued us by his death. By embracing death. He embraced death. Took it upon himself. He destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. You need to understand that when Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised from the dead, go back, go go back, go back, go back. He was embracing death. For us, took it upon himself. He took the whip, he took the beating, he took the spitting, he took everything upon himself. He destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life. Next verse. Scared to death of death. And when I read this, I thought about, I thought about my, 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 my grandmother on my mother's side. And, and, you know, she passed away at 93 and, 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 you know, we was, you know, she was just constantly saying, I'm ready to go home and be with the father. I'm ready to go home and be with the father. I'm ready to go home and be with the father. And in my natural mind, I'm saying, Grandma, stop saying that. And I can just hear Grandma the same way I can hear Jesus telling Peter when Peter was like, Jesus, please, you don't have to go through with this. You know, his emotions were, were, were being rattled by the thought of death. He was scared to death of death. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Get your emotions under control about this death that I got to go through. You don't even understand it. If you understood it, you would understand that it's the most powerful transition that can happen because it's going to benefit those coming behind me, which are my children, my sisters. You call us brethren. So I'm talking to grandma and I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, you know what? I said, I said, I think I understand why some of my loved ones. Uh, you know, before they breathe the last breath, I think I now understand why they were saying, I'm ready to go. They had seen something greater than what we have here. They had seen their Lord and Savior. They were not scared to death of death. They were not cowering through life. They understood to be absent from this body, I'm going to be present with my Lord. And I told her, I said, I have to believe that that overwhelmed my grandmother 
to the point where she loved us as her grandchildren, but she loved her Savior more. And she died of a peaceful death. And I know right now she's in heaven. I know she's present with her Lord. Why? Because I don't want you after this day as a believer to when you understand that he is risen, he has defeated death. I don't want you one more second cowering through life, afraid of death, afraid of the dead, not understanding what happened to your loved one, to your friend. You will thoroughly understand what happened to them and where they are. But don't you go one single day cowering through life under the under under the dominion of death. Hallelujah. On your screens there. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Lord's prayer is about <clears throat> colonizing the earth with heaven. And to do that, we must receive the resurrection. The Lord's prayer is about colonizing the earth with heaven. He said, look, your kingdom come. See, when, you, when, when, you're, when you're saying your kingdom come, and, and when you're saying the Lord's Prayer, and you understand that you're colonizing the earth with the kingdom work, what you're actually saying is you're not even concerned about death down here. You're not even concerned about it. What, what your main concern is, I'm going to colonize this earth with souls who will receive this eternal life. I'm going to colonize this earth with souls who are going to understand that death will no longer intimidate them, that they won't cower through life under the guise of death intimidating them. I'm going to colonize this earth with earth, with heaven's agenda, because I understand that he is risen. I understand what that means to people. And it's so good to me, I can't help but tell people about it and participate in colonizing the earth with the kingdom of God, because this is very good news for those who call him Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Next thought. <clears throat> Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's plans to replenish the earth with believers, not lead people away from the earth. <laughs> this plan is all about replenishing the earth with believers. He is risen is, is evidence that, listen, man, we're going to do the same thing. So we are no longer intimidated by the thought of death. We're going to be raised up too. My God, he was the first fruits of it. It's going to happen to us. We are, heir, we are joint heirs with him. He was the first fruits. God, he was God's first son. He was, he was God's son, and God sent him to this earth. He was the first fruits of, of death, burial, resurrection, and we're going to follow right behind that with our eternal life. Boy, that's good news. That's good news. <clears throat> the natural result of the resurrection life is this. Whatever tried to keep you lost, lost, Death has no power because Jesus took away the sin. The natural result of the resurrection life is whatever tried to keep you lost. Death has no power because Jesus took away the sin. He took it away. That's the natural result of the resurrected life. Glory to God. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Glory to God. Boy, I can smell them doggone cabbages right now with that okra and that cornbread. I know the, the, the mention of okra, some people just can't stand okra. But I love okra. Listen, you eat something I hate too. So we're even. 1 Corinthians 15, let's look at this. Woo! Verse 54. And get this ready for me in the Amplified and the Message. So when this corruptible have put on the incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Here's what this day means to you. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is... It's where, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Now, you got to understand this. Paul is preaching to the church post-crucifixion. And he's telling them, hey, man, look, Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
has won over death. And he's nanny nanny and boo booing death. And he's simply saying, uh, hey, 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 I don't know if y'all know this, but listen, to this is after the, the crucifixion. I need you to understand something. Death has no victory. The grave has no victory. Death has no sting. Jesus has dealt with it when he died, when he was buried, and when he rose. He is risen because we need to know this. Why do we need to know this? Why do we need to know this? Because we cower under the thoughts of death. We cower when we think about death. And I want you to know this about death. Death is a graduation. And Paul is preaching post-crucifixion to these people, and he's simply telling them, listen, man, let me tell you something. Jesus has dealt with all of this. Watch this now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you can try to bury truth, but it's not dead. You can try to bury love, but it cannot be contained. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is risen. You can try to bury love, the truth. You can try to bury love. Let me tell you something. It can't be contained. Why? Because, because no grave, no death, it has no type of victory over the resurrection. He has dealt with it. He's dealt with sin. He's dealt with death. He's dealt with the grave. <clears throat> Let's keep going here. Oh, uh, good Lord. Smash man, you need to. I'm not going to sit up here and be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this word to you, and I'm going to get it. I'm, 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 I'm clicking stuff. I don't know what I'm clicking. I'm going to let you in on it so you don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> I see black boxes. Listen, according to the word of God, Jesus defeated death. And write that down in your notes. Jesus defeated death, and the grave has no victory over us. Jesus defeated death, and the grave has no victory over us. Thank you, Lord. Death is the only power that controls every human being. Listen, no one can stop it from happening. No one. Death is batting a thousand. Inherent in life is death. And the reason is so powerful that, that the reason the resurrection is so powerful is because the very thing that intimidates humankind, because they don't have the understanding that the believer has, the very thing that intimidates them, the believer understands, no, 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 no. That's been dealt with through my Savior. It has no power over me. Death is the only power that controls every human being. Death is batting a thousand. Listen to me. Death does not care about status. Death does not care about skin color. Death does not care about a socioeconomic background. Death does not care about an educational background. Death does not care about a career status. It doesn't care. Death is a state, and it happens to everybody that's born into life. Think about that. So that is why it's so powerful that Jesus has dealt with that thing that torments and, and, and causes people to coward through life. Death, this is big, death can't kill us. It is simply the end of life. That's all it is. What life? This life right here on earth. Why? Because when we got born again, we gained eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Death cannot kill us. But Satan, if you give him the power, the, the word says he has the power of death. If you give it to him, he can make you want to kill yourself. He can make you think you, 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 you don't need to live. He can make you think that. But death, look at that. Death cannot kill us. It's simply the end of life. So don't let it intimidate you anymore because you know exactly where you're going. You know exactly who you're going to be with. You know exactly how it's going to happen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Nothing we possess. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There it is. Woo. Man, oh man, devil, you are a liar. Uh, you are a liar, devil. Everything just, just went out. 
We said earlier, death can't kill us. Nothing we possess, nothing we possess, nothing we build in this lifetime, watch this, will keep us from the grave. Nothing we possess, nothing we build in this lifetime. See, people are stressing out over this and stressing out over this. Let me tell you something. I don't care how powerful, how bad we think we are, it won't keep us from the grave. I'm just trying to shrink down the idea of death and let you know that our Savior who has risen on this day dealt with that, and he does not want it tormenting you anymore. Not that we possess building this lifetime would keep us from the grave. Why? Because inherent in life is death. We're all on that conveyor belt to die. It's just a matter of how are you going to live? You're going to live free from the torments of death? Understand the resurrection. You're going to live looking forward to seeing your family members. Why? Because your family member or your friend that passed is not in your past. They are in your future if you are a believer. <clears throat> Let's keep going. According to 1 Corinthians 15, death is powerless. It's powerless. It's powerless. See, they tell you when you do your estate plan, they said, listen, if you go ahead and prepare to die, with your life insurance, your will, and your trust, you can live your life more peacefully, knowing, God forbid, something happens to you, your wife and your kids are taken care of, or your husband and, his, and your kids are taken care of. It's, it, what happens is you go out and look at death, you get your life insurance policy, and you get enough to cover your family, cover your wife, cover your kids, cover your husband, cover grandma, or whatever, and, 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 and then you go back and you can live a a, 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 a joyous life, free from the torment of this right here. What if I pass? What happens to them? Wh who's going to take care of them? No, you've already taken care of that. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth is trying to tell us on this day that he is risen. I've already went out here. I've went down to hell, to the grave. I've taken care of that. I want you to enjoy your life as a believer, and I want you to focus on colonizing the earth with people who believe on me because there's a great graduation coming for them, and it's coming for you. Next one. The resurrection of Jesus is evidence. The resurrection of Jesus is evidence that death has no power. The resurrection of Jesus is evident that death has no power. Watch this. To keep us in the grave. Do you understand? I used to be in cemetery, walk by cemeteries with my grandmama. You know, we go out there and clean off my mom's grave or whatever it is. And God forbid my feet, one of my foot, one of my feet hit. That grave. Lord have mercy, I'm eight years old, I'm 14 years old, whatever it is, and I walk over. Uh, 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 when I was eight or nine, my granddad was right there beside but Before my mom passed, we go out there and clean, clean his grave. And boy, we're out there horse playing. Boy, if I walk across the grave, my grandma said, boy, you better not do that. I said, what? I said, what happened? My God, I'm only eight years old. You better not do that. She said, you better not even point out a grave. I said, my God, if I point, they're going to do something to me? Not even knowing, ain't nobody there. But my grandma think, had me thinking, boy, you're going to be cursed if you walk over that grave. You point at a grave. You point at a graveyard. Why? Because her, the, only thing she knew, the only thing she knew was I reverenced the dead, but, you're, but, but they're not there. And if you mess with the dead, little grand boy, you're, you're, you're going to get in trouble. Man, I said, my God, let me, let me just go sit in the car then. I don't want to point at no grave. I don't want to walk past and I don't want to clean nothing else because every time I stumble and hit one, I'm in trouble. Not knowing nothing is there. Not knowing nothing is there. <clears throat> Next thought. We're not trying to achieve resurrection. As believers, we're not trying to achieve resurrection. Because Jesus is the evidence. We're not trying to achieve resurrection. It's a natural result of the believer's death that the grave can't keep you. <laughs> it's nothing we're trying to achieve. It's, 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 it's a natural result of the believer's death. So we're not trying to get, okay, get, get the combination down, okay, to be resurrected, I need two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times four is 32, 32 times three is, 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 is 96 or whatever it is. And we're not trying to get some kind of formula because, because, because the resurrection, we're not trying to achieve resurrection. It's the natural result of the believer's death. And Jesus assured us of that. Think about that. You just got to live for God, colonize the earth with believers, 
The Bible says a wise man goes about his life and he's winning souls. And you're just, man, this thing is so good to you. The eternal life is so good to you. You understand what your Savior did. You understand your Savior has defeated death. He's defeated sin. He's defeated it all, the grave. And you just want to tell everybody just how good he is. And not just good here in this natural life, but, man, you got a life. You have eternal life through your Lord and Savior once you give your life to Christ. Amen? Let's keep going here. Next thought. This is big to me. Christ did not struggle to come out of the grave. The grave struggled to try to keep him there. (laughs) Sin and guilt wants to keep you in the grave during this life. Sin and guilt will put you in the grave. And you need to know that Christ has dealt with all of that death stuff. So it wasn't like he was struggling to come out of the grave. Again, it was a natural thing. The grave was struggling trying to keep him. How many people know he could have walked right through the tomb? They they didn't have to move the rock. He could have walked right through it. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he tells us, I think it's in John 17 or John 19, he tells us, he said, look, uh, nobody takes my life. What do you mean nobody takes your life? Oh, uh, you don't understand? Uh, nobody takes it. I've got victory over it. The only, way that thing, the only way that can happen is I lay it down. But I am the authorized dealer of life. I have won over death. I have won over the grave. Nobody takes it. Matter of fact, if I wanted to, I can call down 10,000 angels. I, I can call them down right now to deal with everybody that's right here. But you know what? That's not what I'm going to do because I got a plan, and my plan involves me dying, me being buried, and me being raised from the dead so that my children, the other humans that I had to become like, the other humans, my sisters and brothers, can experience this resurrected life and can experience victory over the grave. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. This next one is big to me. According to 1 Corinthians 15. Death is the great equalizer of men. (laughs) No one cheats it. We are all buried in the same ground. Well, my sister, you know, she went she she went to college and 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 she's got her life together. And, you know, I'm in a one bedroom apartment and I'm single and I don't have a husband and this, this, this. My sister, her status seems to be, let me tell you something, at the point of death. She can be in a five-bedroom home with five cars, $200,000 in the bank. At, at, at the point of death, death equalizes you both. You was in a one-bedroom apartment. She was in a six-bedroom house. But guess what? You're both being the same ground. Death is a great equalizer. Well, he had a little bit more smarts than I did. That's okay. Don't be tormented by death. Jesus has victory over the grave, over death. He has victory over death. Don't be tormented by death. Live your life. Colonize the earth with, with, with people who, who, who says Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Colonize the earth because trust me on this. Death is, will be the great equalizer of you too. It's just a matter of where are you going, where is he going? Or you're both going in the same place. That's why you shouldn't fret over what people got, what people are doing, all this kind of stuff. Because when you have an understanding of the resurrected life, you do understand, oh, there's coming a day when, when this thing called death will equalize us both. I've got victory over it. How do you have victory over it? Through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Do you have it? Because the house ain't going to matter. The 401k ain't going to matter. Your status, your socioeconomic status, it's not going to matter. Why? Because when it comes time for death, it equalizes all man. Kind. And you've seen it happen. A guy can be worth $25 billion, but $25 billion can't stop death. A guy can be worth $100 billion. $100 billion can't stop death. You can't buy it off. You can't do it. Why? It equalizes. It's the great equalizer. You know what? You can have a, you can have a, you can have a, 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 a burial and all you got is a slab of concrete, no tombstone. And 200 yards across the graveyard, he said, man, what is that sparkling and shining over there? Oh, you you hear about the businessman in the city? What what did he do? Man, that tombstone is $25,000. Oh, he is 25, and and Uncle Joe ain't got one? Uh, Yeah, who cares? Don't matter. The ground is a great equalizer. That's where they're both at. (laughs) So he can have a $25,000 tombstone, and you can have no tombstone, but guess what? The ground equalizes you both. (laughs) 
we got victory over death. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Next thought. The resurrection and why? You got to understand death. No matter how powerful we think we are, I'm talking to myself right now. No matter how powerful you think you are, how educated you think you are, how, 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 how whatever we think we are, we can't resist or cheat death. Why am I, why am I sharing these thoughts with you about death? Because Jesus, the, the, the mere fact that he is risen is telling us he's dealt with it. So don't live in pride knowing that the ground is the great equalizer and the de death is the great equalizer. Don't do that. Live colonizing the earth with kingdom agenda, with kingdom people, bringing the kingdom to the earth. Colonize it. Why? Because we're all going to be equalized when we breathe our last breath. We're all going to be equalized when we breathe our last breath, and we're all going to go in the grave. But we all won't stay there. Hallelujah. Hmm. Let's see here. I got to give you this. <clears throat> Glory to God. He is risen. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 4 real quick. I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, and me to get this ready for me in the uh, Amplified Message. Verse 13. Paul is talking to, 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 to people who are, basically what he's telling them, the dead in Christ shall arise. Verse 13. But I will have you not to be ignorant or not knowing. Not be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep. Notice he don't call them dead. That you sorrow not. Even as others which have no hope, don't be tormented by the dead. Don't be tormented by the passing of your father. Don't be tormented by the passing of your mother. Don't be tormented by the passing of your sibling. They are with the Lord. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, glory to God, and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them, here it is again, which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, watch this, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Somebody said that's good news. Let's look at this in the Amplified. Now we do not want you to be uninformed believers <laughs> about those who are asleep or in death. Remember, death is a state. So that you will not grieve for them as others do who have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died, we who? Us believers. And rose again, was resurrected. As in fact, he did. We know that. Even so, God in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus, my mama, my grandmama, my granddaddy. Boy, this is good news. Verse 15, for we say this to you by the Lord's own word, Paul says, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way proceed into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. Next verse. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of a command and with the voice of an archangel and with the blast of... <clears throat> Hallelujah. The trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall arise. Remember, resurrection takes no special effort. It's inherent in the life of the believer. It, it, it takes no special formula. It's inherent in the life of the believer. How do we know that? Because Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. Let's look at it in the message translation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's see it in the message translation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 
And regarding the questions, friends, because I had some when my mom passed, that has come up about what happens to those who are already dead and buried. We don't want you in the dark any longer. First off, you must not carry on over them like people who have nothing to look forward to. Listen, his resurrection tells us as believers, you in your living room, you watching me on that screen, you have something to look forward to. Next verse. As if the grave were, were the last word. The grave don't have the last word. Since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave. Somebody say he is risen. Broke loose from the grave. God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. And then this, we can tell you with complete confidence, we have the master's word on it. You got Jesus' word on it. That when the master comes again to get us, those of us who are still alive will not get a jump on the dead and leave them behind. Boy, this is so much good news. This is so much good news. I can see the young boy that's being tormented by his mother's death or his father. I can see people being tormented. He says, listen, don't, they're covered. I got them covered. Matter of fact, I'm going to honor them before you. Jump on the dead and leave them behind. In actual fact, they'll be ahead of us. The master himself will give the command, or archangel thunder, God's trumpet blast. He'll come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise. They'll go first. Then the rest of us who are still alive at the time will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. The master, oh, well, be walking on air. Woo! Glory to God. And then there will be a huge family reunion with the master. Listen to me. Don't demote your life being tormented by death. This message on the resurrection and why it happened and Jesus having victory over the grave, over death, over sin should set you so free to colonize the earth with Kingdom's ag- kingdom agenda and bring as many people to Christ as possible. Why? When you utter the words, he is risen, you need to understand what you're saying. He has defeated death. And because we are joint heirs with Christ, death has no hold on us. Death has no sting with us. You know, I got these things, these, these, these bees in my backyard and, 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 and I was painting a thing back there and, and, and all of a sudden, Bees just started coming, just, just going everywhere. I said, man, what kind of bees are these? What are these? I looked them up, and they have no sting. I used to call them bumblebees when I was little. But they have no stinger. So they're flying all over the place. And when I realized, oh, they don't have a stinger? Shoot, man, I'm, man we are having a good time. Why? Because I realized they can't sting me. And I began to enjoy it versus like a lot of folks do, running, ducking, dodging, screaming, hollering, like, like the sky is falling in when a bee gets after them. Let me tell you something. What they're running from is the sting. But once I discovered it didn't have no sting, I got calm. And I'm telling you, I came here today to tell you he is risen and death has no sting whatsoever. Death is a state. Death cannot kill you. Death is a state. And for us as believers, it's a graduation. We go home to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with your master. And your loved ones, man, they're covered. That is so much good news. They are covered. He is risen, and I want you just to take this away today. I want you, after this thing, to go off to huddle your family up or get, get your wife and huddle up. And I just want you to sit down and go back and read 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 55 through 54. And I want you to look at one another and say, listen, uh, according to this, Jesus has defeated death and the grave. Now, I know what your granddaddy might have passed from. I know what your daddy might have passed from, all that kind of stuff. But you don't need to be living this life thinking about that. You don't, need to be, you don't need to be tormented by the thought of death. You're going to live. You're going to have a long life. You're going you're gonna, to you're, you're gonna have your youth will be renewed like the eagle. Don't be tormented by death. But know this about death. It's going to happen. But you do know where you're going. And you won't stay there. Why, well, why would you say that? Because our Lord and Savior, he rose from the dead today. And he was the first fruits of resurrection for his brethren and his sisters and his children, which are who? Us. We are joint heirs with Christ. Don't you one day, one more day live guilty of, don't you one day live tormented by the thought of death? 
but you one day live tormented by the dead. Where are they at? What did I do wrong? Will they be with me? Will I see them again? Listen, you need to understand all of that has been dealt with because he is risen. Amen. Well, you're blessed by the word of God. Go ahead and give God a shout right there in your living room. Go ahead and just hug your spouse, hug your kids right there, and just tell them he is alive, he is risen, and I want you to explain to them tonight. Matter of fact, tonight, have your short Bible study on Easter. Have your short Bible study on this day so they can understand. You don't want them to get, you don't want them to get too ingrained in the eggs and everything else. Ain't nothing wrong with the eggs. Ain't nothing wrong with the money. Ain't nothing wrong with the basket. Ain't nothing wrong with the chocolate. But I tell you what, if somebody would have told me around 8, 9, and 10, hey, let me, let me tell you what this day really means. This is a byproduct of the day they're doing these things. But you as a Christian son, you need to understand what this day is and what it means for you. Now, this is why mommy and daddy bring you to church. This is why we're born again. You need to understand what this really means. And man, you sit that, sit that daughter down, sit that son down, sit that spouse down. You guys sit down and you really defeat death with the scripture. And you let them know because Jesus rose on this day, guys, it's evidence the same thing is going to happen to us. The same thing is going to happen to us. And when they say, well, what about grandma and grandpa? They'll go, they'll go first. They'll go first. That's good news. Amen. Listen, I don't want to take for granted that everybody on this, on this beautiful, precious day called Easter, the day that he's alive.